Uh, today I'm gonna show you how to test any battery with a homemade do-it-yourself battery tester. Uh, this is her. Her name is Old Betsy or uh, Gamla Bettan som vi säger på svenska. And it's nothing else than a DC motor. This is from a 1000 watt electric scooter with uh, 48 volt lead acid batteries that has uh, <laughs> it broke down quite quickly but the motor is still working uh, now it's, it's a brushless DC motor DC motor which has two cables no singles or anything like that and it can handle pretty much any any common voltages I usually have 24 to 48 volt batteries and this can accommodate maybe 15 to 60 volts or something like that. And to this I connected a controller, a multi-controller from 9 to 60 volt. That has a... I don't recall what these are called in English. And a very old but still working the watt meter. This one I actually built long before I started the battery doctor, the battery doctor. I made some improvements over the years but it's still pretty much basic just a DC engine that you can hook up to any battery to test if it's actually working you can measure the voltage or do some other tests but this is the only actual way to see with your own eyes if a battery is working it's very simple but still this is what I use to show customers that their batteries are working and that uh, the problem is somewhere else in the e-bike. Often there is water damage, damage controller, loose cables or stuff like that. If you can turn your e-bike on and the display lights up but you still can't run it, then the most common problem is um, that there is water in the controller that is not giving the, giving the motor any power. Of course it could be a bad pass sense or a bad throttle, but this is an excellent and super simple way to test any battery from 9 to 60 volts in this case and it, it doesn't look like much but it works flawlessly and it's so impossible simple to build and to read you just need an old DC motor probably from some kind of electric scooter maybe electric skateboard you can of course you can use a hoverboard I added an on off switch because when you connect the battery to the Turnigy uh, there is an inrush current because the Turnigy is powered from the source uh, so when you connect it to the battery it draws a lot of in-current power resulting in sparks when you make the connection and you can just add any kind of switch because you're not gonna be running that much amps it's like one or two amps so you can use any kind of standard switch you can find and you make sure it's not connected when you connect the battery and this is a very old, more than 10 year old battery that had a defective fuse. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but there's been some water coming in to this, connect, to this pin. Uh, adding some uh, uh, crap to the surface and also there have been, it melted a bit on this side. So it still has connectivity if you test it. But it, this part that connects to the holder, that is the problem. And you can get a little voltage through, but you cannot actually run a motor, so it was kind of hard to find. But of course, always check the fuse as the first thing you do. You can connect the negative and the positive in whatever order you want. Make sure there are it is the right wires and power on. Not much is happening, but it's reading the voltage and it's 28.6 volts, and this is a 7S24 volt battery, so it's almost fully charged and then you uh, use this I think it's called pedometer you can start off easy so you don't blow any fuses but uh, you can adjust now we're at one amp and you can hear the motor spinning which is a good sign I usually pump it up to max and then it's about 1.6 a for 24 watt batteries you can see here it's 45 watts and since there is no resistance, no cogs, no wheels to spin, no weight to push, then this is the max amp you're gonna get out of it. So it's only to test that the motor is actually working, not that it can work 
on high amps. The important thing here is to show that you can test test the battery that it can actually drive a motor. Now you can see here there is no problem. And of course there are batteries with very poor capacity and then you can monitor the voltage. Of course it depends a lot on the capacity of the battery but most small batteries have the same capacity. That's, that's about 10A. 10 amp hours and it, the, the voltage drops 0.01 volt about every 5 to 10 seconds so we can monitor 28.24 volts I think this is actually a 15 amp battery so, so it's not gonna be dropping that quick And here you can see it's dropping to 24.23 almost. You see the, the capacity is very good in this battery still. It's over one year and it's almost not dropping any volts. It's not dropping the voltage at all even if it's running for 1.6 or 50 watts. And 50 watts is probably what an e-bike runs like without any heavy resistance like heels or heavy rain. 250 watts is most likely in the pills but 50 watts is a good continuous running. And here you can see it's dropped to 28.22 so there is really good capacity in this battery. It, it might not be the most professional way to test batteries but it works and it's so simple it's easy to build and you can see with your own eyes and hear it with your own ears that the battery is working and you can monitor the condition of the battery instantly because I really like to hear how the motor sounds because I know this sounds I tested so many batteries with it and I can hear if there's something wrong uh, you don't really need any instruction how to build this you just need an old DC motor with you um, can see here two input wires and two output wires and then three for the potentiometer and you can see this is a DC motor controller it's the same one you use on e your e-bikes on almost every vehicle but it's extremely simple and instead of having a throttle, of course you can have a throttle, you can use any controller you have lying around that fits the motor. But if you have more advanced controllers then there's other things that can be wrong. Since this one has just one input, one output and one simple switch to control the battery, there's very little that can go wrong. In normal controller there can be less on-off switches. Uh, handbrake stops and a lot of other things and if you're running a, a brushless motor with signals and hall sensor then those can go wrong just try to find a simple motor as possible and these are not expensive they're less than 10 bucks you don't even need this but of course it's a very very good thing to have so you can actually monitor the voltage and an on on off switch is highly recommended that's the basic you need I don't really know what else you could possibly want to add to this for basic testing. Of course the range could be a little bit higher and you could add instead of a motor you can add resistor or loads or anything else. You can add a fan, a heating element, uh, but the DC motor is so good because batteries are so often used to power motors or engines. So it's, it just feels right to use a motor, a DC motor to test batteries with. I'm not going to show you any schematics because there are just two lines going through everything here and it's not harder than that.